Guadalupe. On December 9th, 1531, a 57 year old Aztec Juan Diego saw the Blessed Mother on a hill in Mexico City. She told Juan to have a church built in her honor. When Juan went back to ask Bishop Samarra about this, the bishop did not understand Indian dialect and he did not believe in the vision Juan described. Three days later, on December 12, Mary appeared again to Juan Diego and this time she gave him a sign for the bishop. Take these roses to the bishop, she said, as she arranged in his cloak beautiful roses she had Juan Diego pick from the hillside, although it was winter. When he was admitted into the bishop's room, Juan Diego opened his cloak and dropped the roses. On the cloak there remains an image of Mary as she appeared to Juan Diego. The image of Mary on the cloak is known as Our Lady of Guadalupe for an interesting reason. On that same day, Mary appeared to Juan's uncle and cured him, giving him a message for the bishop, saying that she would crush the serpent's head. The bishop did not understand the Indian's language. The Indian word for crush the serpent sounded to him like Guadalupe, the name of Mary's shrine, Mary's shrine in Spain. Thinking that the Virgin wanted the new shrine to have the same name, the bishop called her Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mary appeared to Juan Diego dressed as an Aztec woman to show her love and compassion to an oppressed group of people. Mary had heard the prayers and pain of these people and she came to give them hope. Mary's visit to Guadalupe is a reminder that God will remember his mercy for all people. In Mary's songs of joy, the significant, sorry, the magnificent, Magnificat. What? Magnificat. She prayed to God because she has put down, because he had put down the mighty, exalted the lowly, filled the hungry, and sent the rich away empty. People honor Old Lady of Guadalupe because they recognize her motherly concern for them. The Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe is an opportunity to reread the account of this miraculous story and to consider how God's work is being done in the midst of our lives and on behalf of everyone, rich and poor alike. I will be talking about Las Posadas, which is a festival celebrated in Mexico. Las Posadas is a religious festival celebrated in Mexico and parts of the United States for nine days between December 16th and 24th. It's about the journey that Joseph and Mary made from Nazareth to Bethlehem in search of a safe refuge where Mary could give birth to, to the baby Jesus. The tradition Posada song is an important part of the celebration. Merry Christmas from the Filipino community, or as we say it in our native tongue, Maligayang Pasko. Filipinos are very festive when it comes to the holidays. Christmas starts in September and ends in January, celebrating the Three Kings. Traditions start with decorations, specifically the Christmas star or parol. It is typical to have carolers, parties, and doing Kris Kringle or Secret Santa. The majority are Christian Catholics, so we celebrate the nine midnight masses called Simbangabi. On Christmas Eve, we have the Noche Buena, where we eat great tasty dishes. It is also that time of year when you visit family and godparents for gifts. Maligayang Pasko, everyone! Merry Christmas from the Indonesian community. How Indonesians celebrate Christmas is by singing popular Christmas carols, such as an Indonesian version of Silent Night and O Holy Night. They also celebrate it by baking cookies, such as Nastar, which is a butter cookie with pineapple jam filling. Christmas trees in Indonesia are usually made from plastic, but some people on other islands use real ones. Santa Claus is also very popular in Indonesia and is usually seen in shopping malls handing out gifts. And last but not least, Merry Christmas in Indonesia is Selamat Natal. This is what Vietnamese people do during Vietnamese Christmas. Vietnam natives celebrate Christmas by throwing confetti, taking pictures, and enjoying the Christmas decorations and lights of big hotels and apartment stories. Uh, lots of cafes and restaurants are open for people to enjoy snacks. Christian and Catholics will spend the day praying and singing songs and will join the fun at night. Merry Christmas from the Chinese community. In China, Christmas serves more as a family type event. Families will spend days together. They'll go watch a movie, enjoy a meal, and ice skiing. Cities such as Shanghai decorate their parameters with beautiful decoration. This decoration includes but not limited to the iconic Santa Claus, 
ornaments and marrying Jesus. Young couple used this as a romantic date, and Chinese Christian would spend the day singing and praying at the church. Christian in Italy, just like Christmas anywhere around the world, is one of the only times we get to spend time with our family and friends that we usually don't, don't get to see often. Specifically in Italy, there's a nativity that we usually do that is just like the one we do in America, where we have to celebrate Jesus' birthday. In Italy, there's a legend called the Legend of Bafana, and there's usually a witch that comes around and gives candy to little kids, just like Santa. It's like Santa, but a witch. In the Christmas tradition I will be doing is for Ethiopia. Christmas Eve and Christmas is dated on January 6th and 7th. This day is located on a different calendar from which the U.S. uses, known as the Julian calendar. The Ethiopian Christmas tradition, called Ghana, is not about giving or receiving gifts, but really is about rituals to honor God. This ritual is usually done in a church for a couple of hours, starting at the beginning of night all the way up to 2 o'clock in the morning. This, usually, this is usually done on the day before Christmas. Christmas Eve, as we know. Then on the day of Christmas, many pe Ethiopian people dress in complete white. This is this clothing is called Nadala, which I have for you right here. For women and men. This is for a woman. And this is for men, or you could say for boys. This is a smaller. They also fast 43, 43 days before Christmas until their fast breaks. The Mojo, unity in your family and people. Koji Chagalea, self-determination to find yourself through yourself. Ujima, collective work and responsibility to create a community and solve problems together. Ujama, cooperative economics to profit together. Nia, purpose and drive to restore people's greatness. Kumba, creativity to improve our community and world by doing it in our way. Imani, our hope and trust of what we do is for a cause and a struggle. The holiday Kwanzaa is relatively new. It's probably younger than many of our parents and some of the staff here. It was created by Moana Harinja as a way to empower the African and Black communities and help us remember our roots and traditions that were purged from us a hundred, hundreds of years ago. Many African nations on the west and south side of Africa and black families celebrate it as a national holiday. There is seven days of Kwanzaa. The Feast of Karamu is on the sixth day of is on the sixth day. Respect is a major principle of the holiday. Respect for the hard efforts of the planting and growing crops, which is represented by fruits and vegetables. Mazao, respect for the African traditions and their foundation, which is typically represented as, straw, as a straw mat. Mikeka, respect for our ancestors and their history, which is represented as the candle holder. Kinara, the respect for our shared struggles and our fight to be heard in the world, which is represented by the seven candles themselves, Mishuma, the respect for the future of the children and their future, which is represented by ears of corn, Muhendi, respect for one another through unity, which is represented by the unity cup, Kikombe, Chela the respect between family dynamics from one parent to kids and back, which is represented by gift giving. Zawadi. Kwanzaa represents the unity between the black and African communities through our heritage.